Hey guys, what's going on and welcome to the channel. It's been a long time since I've seen you guys, but we have something interesting behind me. We have a 2000 Lincoln Town Car, also known as the Panther Body. Today I'm going to show you guys how to upgrade this to a double din radio. <laughs> the Alpine factory head unit. This was a thing of glory in its former days. I mean, check this out, cassettes. I know you guys may be too young to know what a cassette is. It's something that you can just finger back and forth like this, and it works pretty well, actually. These are cassettes, in case you guys have never seen one before. We have here Seattle's Italian, the fuck? removal process how do you take the stereo out how do you get it to this point right here well you're gonna need yourself either a coat hanger um, four flatheads or just pick yourself up this uh, it's probably gonna cost you about five dollars no lie and the way that it works is pretty simple I kind of feel like if I show you the mechanics of it then you'll understand the process of it because a lot of people just think that you just stick it in like this and then you just pull back well that's not going to do anything because if you come over to here to this side where you can actually see the whole thing happening when I press it in you can see it pushes down that tab right there now the secret is when you go to shove it in you shove it in as hard as you can and that way it sinks in and it locks in and then you push this way just like that look you push like that and then you pull so it's push and pull and push and pull once you have the alpine physically pulled out of the hole you're gonna grab it firmly and you're gonna give it a little persuasion in pulling it straight out now you're going to notice something unusual. Look at this unit. Look at how it is configured. Everyone that has ever owned a Panther body vehicle will realize that there's something unusual happening here. And by unusual, I mean there's something really, really weird. And I'll show you what it is. If you look back here, you have this this whole thing. So that whole thing is part of the air conditioning system. That's right folks, if you put in a normal sized double din radio into here or double din head unit or double din whatever you guys want to call them. If you guys want to put an iPad in here, well iPad you won't have this problem. But anything that is large or normal, it will be too deep and you'll have to cut into your air conditioning. Now, if you do that, there's a good chance that that is no longer going to blow cold air. And of course, there's the people that will put Bondo over the whole thing just so that way the air goes back and forth through the sides. But realistically, you don't have to do this. They sell units now that are called mechless. And mechless units are the units that don't have this part right here they're actually only like this deep and I have one that we're gonna be installing in here it is a newer Alpine since we're staying with the theme of the vehicle and it's gonna allow us to fit in here without making any modifications and that way it's easily accessible serviceable and it provides fantastic quality without sacrificing air conditioning so now let's go ahead and discuss the connections that we have back here. This thing right here is called the Balducci tip. It is useless. This over here is your American antenna for the vehicle. This is how you get your uh, radio frequencies are here on this cable. Now we have three plugs here. We have this one, which is the one for all your speakers and whatnot. Then you have the plug in the back, this plug right there. That is for the amplifier. That's right, this factory system has an amplifier and it goes to the caboose. 
and this right here is for the six disc CD changer. Yep, that's what they did to bypass the good old cassettes. Let's go take a look at that six disc CD changer and talk about the amplifier and what options do we have at this point. All right, so in the back of the vehicle, when you open it up, you're greeted with a bunch of parts. Why are all these parts in here? Well, it's because this vehicle was an accident, and we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about this. This is a six-disc CD changer. Check it out. Look how retro this is. Look how cool and funky and fresh this is. And in here is where you would put all your sickest mix that you would make anything to give to girls when you were picking them up on dates back in the 90s you would make them a mixed disc oh snap so this is essentially how this owner or in this case my brother how he's been getting by in life is by making mixtapes so uh, we're definitely gonna move them up in the 21st century 22nd century what century are we in and then the amplifier. There is an amplifier in this vehicle and it's located back there. You guys can see it right there. And that amplifier is powering this sub. One little sub. That sub. That's what that amplifier is powering. So it's not really something big. It's not really something important. And the cool thing is that amplifier, believe it or not, the new radio that we're putting in has more power than that unit does, which is impressive. So here you go. This is side-by-side -side comparison of the old traditional radio that you'll find in most of the Panther body vehicles. Um, and then this is the new Alpine right next to it. Dimension-wise, like I said, you're not going to beat these dimensions. This is exactly up to the point right here. Now, the interesting part about this new radio is the fact that versus here, you can see the massive heat sinks throughout. This is the entire heat sink for this whole radio. So all of this space it's using as to cool off this whole system. Now, the strange part that most people notice when they see this radio is like, um, I'm missing everything. Well, not really, because you get everything over here in the cable. All the cables and everything you need are right here. All you need are the, are the harnesses, which I will tell you which ones apply to this vehicle, and it will make installation simple-ish. Now, let's go ahead, jump into the car, do a dry fit, putting this into that space to see if any accommodations need to be made. I did order a mounting kit that's going to go here and it's going to go here and allows this to go into the the hole and it will lock into place the problem with that mounting kit and most mounting kits for panther body vehicles are once you sink it into the hole with that kit this is not going to come back out it will not come back out you will have to literally take apart the entire dash to get to what you need to get to from the back so before you totally finish your install, you have to make sure all your wires and everything are plugged in correctly. So this is what we're looking at currently with the Alpine unit in the vehicle. As you guys can see, it's going to look great. It's at a perfect angle for the driver. The only downside is it does not fit. And the reason for that is because the dimensions of the opening are just not large enough. They're barely there. And I'm gonna show you exactly what's causing this hiccup. That way you guys can see what needs to be done and how to get your radio to go in. Now, there is, with the kit that I bought, there's gonna be little pieces that are gonna go on the sides that are gonna hide this in much better. So essentially, what you would have to do is right here, that area literally that's the black velvet you're gonna have to take a dremel and you're gonna have to dremel that out same thing with this area right here with the black velvet we're gonna take the dremel and we're gonna dremel that out we're gonna make it nice and flush 
and with that the radio is going to be able to sync right in perfectly and then with the tools or in this case the adapter plate it's going to grip right here onto the edges which is what we want and it's going to hold the radio in place securely now there's something really important I should mention right now like I said this whole thing is not going to be able to take you're not going to be able to take this out of the vehicle easily you would have to remove all of this trim to service the radio so it's really important that you do everything the right way it's also really important to note that there are two bolts one here and one here both of these bolts hold this trim piece in so if the person is removing the trim piece and they take the bolts off there and they go to pull how are you going to take these out to service the radio down the line may I recommend removing these two bolts now take them out of the vehicle don't worry it's not going to cause any looseness anything like that what it's going to simply do is simplify the life of other individuals that are servicing the radio or if you have to service something back here later on down the road you're not going to be dealing with the nightmare of oh my god how do I get this radio out to get to these two bolts so we're going to take them out in advance we're going to take the Dremel we're going to run it across here run it across the bottom and then we're going to mount all the pieces pre-wire everything so that way everything just plugs and plays we'll run the backup camera through the vehicle everything will be here ready to go so that way when we sink it into the car it will be professionally done what we're going to do is dremel out the bottom and the top piece i'm going to show you guys the dremel that i'm going to be working with this is my ryobi cordless dremel it is a very very nice dremel i'm not sponsored by ryobi um if they want to sponsor me they can call me and i'd be more than happy to accommodate that because uh, Uncle Rich is sponsored by Milwaukee, so this would be a nice upgrade for me. Um, what I like about this particular unit is it's battery powered. You can control the speed, and then there's the on-off switch. So pretty simple. Be really, really straightforward. And then I can go ahead and make my cuts that I need to make. So we're going to go ahead and just cut right there. And then we're going to cut over there and run across on both top and bottom. This is just going to get sanded down and that's going to be large enough to fit our new radio in. And now you guys get to see the full opening once you guys have that out of the way. And you'll see just how easily now the double din just slides right into its little perspective cubby hole. This is going to look really nice when it's all done. Next thing that we're going to have to do is start to what I call dry fit the radio in to make sure that all the tolerances and everything is acceptable. This kit from X Scorpion, um, I'm gonna have it in the description section below. It's the kit that I'm electing to use. There's other kits out there. There's another one by Met Metra, um, but I prefer, I think this one's gonna work out the best. So it's gonna fit in here perfectly. It's gonna go right up to there. And we're gonna have to cut off some of this little tip of plastic because if you look here's our factory right here you can see if we leave this like that we're not going to clear so we need to essentially just cut off that little tip but I'm just going to do a straight cut all the way down that way it's more easier for me to manage now, as you guys can see it's very very nice double din kit and now comes the part where everybody usually taps out Wiring harness. This is where everybody usually just says, nope, not going to do it, not my problem. So what I'm going to do is pre-wire everything. I have a lot of accessories that I'm going to be hooking up to this. I have steering wheel control that's going to be needed for me to use the uh, steering wheel function. And then I also have the harness adapter for the factory harness. That way we don't have to just cut 
that plug, it will just become a plug and play. This is what the wiring harness looks like when it's completed. This is completely wired up to all the little stuff that I wanted to hook up to. So let's go ahead and go over some of the details. First, on the Alpine radio on the back, they tell you what each color wire from their harness is going to. And then this is the kit that I used for the plug and play and then they tell you the color of the wires from the factory vehicle so essentially you're just going to match the color for the color because that's pretty these are the universal colors over here and those are uh, the colors over there the only difference is I have to warn you on an Alpine is the orange and white the orange and white is reverse where the orange over here would be illumination. There is no illumination on this radio, so this radio does not auto dim. So for the illumination wire, we just have it just capped off like that. This is from the factory plug over there. So let's go over these components. Starting from down here, this is where your amplifier is gonna get power two this is from the factory plug and then this is the alpine plug you can see the both blue wires went to the remote connection of the factory plug and then both black wires went to the ground so all the grounds are grounded together the next component on the list is this access control. And this access control is for the steering wheel for it to work and all the buttons on the steering wheel to talk to the radio. Important that you guys go onto the website and they will tell you specifically which wires will you be needing. In this case, we only needed the black, the red, and the gray red. So all the other wires, because this is a generic part, were not needed so they were capped off so this is actually I used a t-tap on it because it's gonna have to tap into the factory wire it can't plug into something so we're gonna have to tap into it and then the red from there is sharing the reds all here and the black is of course going straight to the black ground so this is a massive black ground point right here the next component is this yellow battery cable now from the alpine radio they do give it with a fuse it's really important if you guys are going to be soldering to take the fuse out because the heat may pop that fuse or may um, break it down so it doesn't function as well now this cable this little rca cable is part of this access system and then this is going to plug into the back of the radio there's going to be a plug for it it's going to be this plug right there where it says W remote that's where it's going to go into now the last component of this whole setup is this right here this is a bypass system for Alpine units they're about five dollars online and what it does is it allows you to use the video function with this unit without pulling the e-brake because Alpines need that e-brake and they'll tell you right here where it is you'll see parking brake yellow and blue so what it's doing is we're gonna go over the wires the blue wires going to the remote so they're all shared right there on the remote the yellow wire is going to the e-brake wire see it right there this is all going to the e-brake cable from the Alpine. And then you have a green wire, not needed because this kit does not have a um, foot brake sensor. So we just went ahead and capped it. And then lastly, the black is the ground. And that went to the massive ground connections right here. So everything's all done. We're all good to go now. We're just at the plug-in phase. Uh, it's really important if you guys have not bench tested your display that before you go happy-go-lucky tying all of this that you 
test everything and make sure that everything functions. So we're going to go ahead and throw this into the car, just run a quick test and make sure everything is good. These components right here, remember there's a factory amp, they're going to hook up to this radio. Now this radio, because it's a mechless to save space, everything comes with an additional plug. So they're just going to plug right into here. And then of course this cable, I know you're questioning what this is, this is for the backup sensor. So when you put the car into reverse, this is going to go to your tail light. I put a female adapter here because I'm going to put a male on the other side from the back of the car to there. So that way when it goes into reverse, it'll tell the system that, hey, put the backup camera on because we are going to be putting that on this vehicle as well. Now we're inside the car, we went ahead, we tested out the harness to make sure that everything functions perfectly, and we went ahead and Tessa taped the entire thing. Tessa tape is not Tesla tape. For those of you that don't know, Tessa tape is a tape that has a cloth fabric over it that prevents the sound of rattling cables behind the dashboard. Everything, including the box, has been Tessa taped to prevent vibration. Now, if you guys remember that T-clip that I used to go here, this is the wire that we went after. Let me go ahead and get a better shot of it. It's that blue wire with that red thin pin line on it. That's the only wire that we tapped. I'm not a fan of cutting factory wires, and I'm not a fan of dealing with that. I always like to keep things as OEM as possible because you never know when this vehicle is actually going to be worth more than a dollar. So now that this is complete, we can go ahead and start putting everything into position so we can sync our radio into here. Now remember, because this is going to be sunken in here, which means that the only way you're going to be able to get this thing out is if you remove the two screws from here and if you pull the dash panel off the vehicle. That was the advantage of removing the two screws here so later on down the road you can still service everything. You're going to have to put your backup cable video in here now and plug everything in so that way you don't have to go through this process again. Also, don't forget to wire your microphone for your receiver. I'm going to wire it traditionally this direction and then it's going to go right up in this area back here. And lastly... USB cable because this particular unit can plug into your phone and it can do Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You want to run your USB cable at least somewhere down there temporarily till you decide on a final location. My ultimate goal is to run the USB cable down through here and into the center console. That way you can put your phone in there and charge it and still get nice and flush looking install. Now the next thing you want to do is run your cable to your select spot. I'm going to show you guys a cool way to make this look as professional as possible. Go ahead and get a long zip tie, make it come all the way up through here. So you're going to pull this through with a USB extension and we're going to run it to the center console up here in the armrest. Now once you guys have your USB extension cable at this point. You're going to want to take the tie and then run it underneath the center console because the person that trained me in the dark arts of car stereo told me that the difference in between a cheap install and a good install is the one that can hide the wires the best wins. So this is going to be hidden up underneath and it's going to be really flush. It's going to go straight stealth mode and then it's going to come up into this area here. That's just a golf ball from my son. It's just going to come up into this area here. And then I'm going to drill a hole into the center armrest and feed this cable into it. So that way the driver can plug in their phone, their tablet, whatever they want to, right into this area. And all the wiring will be hidden and it will look super clean. Drilled into our secret hole. This is going to be our hole that is going to allow us to pass the cable into here. So the phone can stay here and everything will look super professional. What I'm using to drill the hole is a stepper bit. If you guys have never seen a stepper bit, 
they're capable of cutting through metal pretty easily and you decide how far you want to keep going and that's how big the hole is as you can see there where the shiny part is that's where I stopped and that is big enough for my hole to pass through for the USB now I'm going to go ahead and clean this up and then on the inside what I'm going to do so it doesn't look like there's a hole is I'm going to put a black grommet on there a flush grommet and cut a little slit into it so it looks very very clean very very professional I took the lid off the top so you guys could see exactly what I did to the center console the wire is invisible 100% and it's going in through here and coming out right into the hole that we drilled. There's the grommet to protect the wire. Now what you guys can see, the importance is to get a good USB wire that has a nice fabric cord, something that has great reviews. You don't want to be installing something cheap and then later on down the road this breaks and then you have to redo all of this all the way up to the front of the vehicle. So you want something nice and good because essentially this is where they're going to plug in their device and then their phone is going to be sitting right around this area. Now the other thing is you want to give yourself plenty of slack so that way when you lift this up everything moves as normal. As you guys can see here everything is normal. Yes the cord is slightly visible right there in this position but honestly the seat will be back over here. And I think this is what I call a very nice and clean install. I think this is something that uh, my brother is going to appreciate having his phone here so that way he can just drive and focus on the road ahead. So everything is plugged in now except for the antenna. That's going to be the last thing to plug because it is the shortest cable on the Panther platform. Make sure you guys have your remote plugged in that controls your steering wheel functions. Your microphone, make sure that is plugged in. Sirius XM, if you guys believe in that, plug that in. USB, make sure you guys plug in your USB or else you won't be able to do your Apple CarPlay. Everything else is nice and closed. All these connections are still open and available. And then this is the important one. You guys are going to plug in those RCA cables into the one that says rear out. Make sure you guys plug them in or else your subwoofer will not work. The rear view camera is plugged in and the sensor wire is also hooked up. So everything is good to go. I'm just going to plug in the USB and sync this radio in and then we are done. All right, so this is what it looks like factory installed. By factory, I mean you, the viewer. You guys did this. It was that easy. Sure enough, this is a project that you guys can tackle. Look at how clean this looks inside the vehicle. That is the screen protector on there. I'm going to give my brother the pleasure of peeling that off and check it out from the driver's perspective that looks really really good and I think he's gonna be really impressed with it let's go ahead turn on the car and check it out look at that that brought the car right up to the 20th century and it looks amazing I don't know about this gold clock this no longer matches anything but everything works perfectly. If you press mode, it will change through everything. So everything works perfectly. Bluetooth works perfectly. And I'm going to go ahead and mute that. Bluetooth works perfectly. Backup camera works. Everything is fantastic. And if you guys want, you can plug in your phone. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, it all works. This is the best way to install a double DIN radio in your Panther platform vehicle. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, remember, give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. I don't post often anymore, but when I do, it is quality content and I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you and take care.